now coming to the use and uh, the apps that are built in so obviously it's got the regular apps such as alarm and uh, contacts find my phone etc that's in pretty much all watches for the alarm i actually found that they've actually tuned the interface to a new sort of interface it fits well with this scroll wheel so i thought that's pretty cool uh, case it, uh, important thing to notice since it doesn't have a speaker it only gives a vibrating alarm which is actually pretty cool if you're in a class or a office environment so it can give you a pretty good um, reminder yet not be disturbing to others forecast is another app it's actually pretty simple obviously but the interface I have been pretty nicely designed for this scroll wheel so you can see that I mean New Delhi and the forecast can be scrolled through just with this scroll wheel. Obviously you could use the touch screen but why not? So agenda, alarm, contacts, contacts you can dial from here uh, and you can also initiate WhatsApp. Find my phone, you can, uh, if, you, if you're unable to find your phone, in the, it's probably hidden in a couch cushion or somewhere as we all felt uh, one time or the other. You can just use this it will ring the phone even when it's on silent so that's cool fit is the google fit app uh, which i found is uh, pretty uh, good even in comparison to the misfit app so it will show today's uh, counter uh, and this is actually a new update and probably in the android view 2.0 it shows the heart rate data it regularly takes at about five to ten minutes of usage and it can also give you the last I, mean, I did go for a couple of runs and uh, I used the Misfit app for that. Flashlight is basically just maxes out the brightness and puts on a white screen. Useful uh, when you're looking for something in a bag or uh, that sort. Now I've installed some third party apps. Life Sum is a calorie and a water tracker. You can put stuff on it. Maps is obviously Google Maps. It's good to see the app map running on this. And also a uh, new addition on not seen on a lot of watches that I've seen is addition of a compass. So you can see that the it rotates with that. So some of the watches don't have it. It's good for navigation. Obviously, it needs a, a connected phone or Wi-Fi with active internet connection. And the good thing is even if you start your navigation on the phone you can put your phone back in the pocket and just get the directions for when you want to turn when you have to turn it'll give a vibration and go back to it and it even looks well with the always on display on and the ambient display to stay on i'll just show you so when you have a map on it that map will actually remain so you can see the names of the roads and all the camera is actually not able to pick it up correctly now to go to misfit activity is the native app by misfit it's pretty cool uh, you can set but it's kind of limited in what it does you can set your uh, goals and it also has a music control panel so that's good that you don't have to go back to your original one it's got play music obviously it doesn't have a speaker so you need a connected bluetooth headset i've tried it with a couple and it works well now an interesting part is you can't transfer music straight from your phone to this watch it's a very terrible decision that Google has made with Android Wear 2.0. What you need to do is go to the music.google.com place on your uh, PC, upload the songs to the to their library. It is free. You don't need to worry about that. But you need to upload any songs that you want to download, and then you first you first of all you upload them to the cloud. Then using this watch, you open my library, and then you go to the songs that are that you've uploaded the artists, by artists albums or playlists and then you can see it so for example i uploaded a few songs uh, you can see this playlist is the last added so since it doesn't have uh, the speaker it will ask you to go and when it does start playing it's obviously pretty good 
and you can uh, change the tracks as well pretty easy not a problem so while the choose is good when once you've done setting it up i just find it very cumbersome in the olden days of Android where it was pretty easy to sync the music over bluetooth from your phone to the watch and that's the way it should be it's got about uh, a one gig of uh, memory free so you can easily put about 100 or 200 songs so with the android wear 2.0 you can uh, do the I haven't connected it to the internet right now, but uh, you can download apps straight from the uh, internet. Uh, so that's the way that it would work if you had it connected to an iPhone because obviously you can't uh, co copy apps from your phone to this watch directly. It will need to be downloaded from the Play Store. So obviously got reminder, settings, Shazam, I downloaded it, stopwatch is a good use and a cool thing about stopwatch is First of all, this cool animation, and uh, since this is running, you can leave it on. Even if you turn off the screen, the stopwatch will still keep running. So that's a good thing that I see. So going back to the timer, translate. A very cool feature on translate is I'll show you. So uh, you can obviously use text speech to text so you have to see hello hello so what happens is once you get once you can uh, talk into the phone say the word you want to translate and then when you tilt the screen to the other angle the translated word is actually magnified and you can show it to the other person the one who you want to talk to so it's actually a pretty cool feature that uh, they've done and it's actually been available since, for, uh, since the start of Android Wear actually then uh, Uber is actually a standalone fully featured Uber app you can select the type of car you want the payment method and everything and uh, I've actually used it a few times and it works well when you have a good internet connection. So whether it is obviously a Google app, World Clock is also is a pretty simple World Clock but I do find this uh, pretty cool animation so it's nice to use. Maybe not all the major cities on this and I definitely don't think it has all the time zones but yeah, very cool to use. just got on to the internet now and uh, an important thing that I want to tell is some of the watch faces do not support burn-in protection since this is an OLED display it's important to uh, make sure that there is no burn-in and it will obviously be more when you have uh, that always on display on so you can force display burn-in protection and that will enable it but you have to do it with every reboot I commonly use uh, either this default watch face or probably one of, one of this time gate or I've downloaded a bunch of uh, Facer, uh, Facer is actually a third party app so it's actually an app so it comes as a watch face and within that watch face you can actually select the face that you want so right now I've got this running on it so if I tap it this is a face I watch as currently. Now these are some of the recent ones that I was using. I like this app, this one quite a lot. Because even when it is on ambient mode, now a very easy way to turn off the display is just put your hand over it and it turns to an ambient display. Now I use this way because it's got all the markings and in fact it's also got the readings for the battery life of the watch. So this is the battery life of the watch, this is the battery life of the phone. Uh, obviously all the dials are clear and uh, it's also got some burn-in protection. I can see the dials moving when I turn it 